While benchmarking our fleet of Gravis cards for a review of AMD's Radeon Pro WX8200, results for three other tests were generated that couldn't have been included in that look, all because Radeons don't support Nvidia's CUDA. In this video, we're going to quickly explore performance with Otoy's Octane Render, Redshift, and also V-Ray. Both Octane Render and Redshift are built exclusively around Nvidia's CUDA, but V-Ray offers OpenCL support to let Radeons be used. However, none of the scenes I have on hand render appropriately on Radeon, so given that, I wouldn't recommend Radeon for V-Ray use right now. At the moment, most of Nvidia's current Gen GeForce and Quadros are Turing based, with the Volta based GV100 proving to still be a good choice for those with specific deep learning needs, and a lot of memory bandwidth. The Titan V could easily belong on the GeForce table here, but given its focus, it's worthier of being on the Quadro side. It's also Volta based, but has Titan XP matching levels of VRAM at 12GB. Nvidia's Turing architecture has so far infused 3 GPUs each for both GeForce and Quadro, with the top dog being the Quadro RTX 8000, priced at $10,000. If 48GB is actually too much VRAM for your uses, or you're wanting to save a few thousand dollars, the 24GB RTX 6000 is going to be a worthy consideration. Even the RTX 5000 is attractive at its price point in comparison to the last gen P5000, though that could be said about all of the RTX cards. Performance from Pascal to Turing has seen a nice boost as it is, but the future prospects of RTX features being taken advantage of is what makes the new Quadros and GeForces exciting. For those hoping to get great performance on the cheap, you'll be happy to know that GeForces will handle all three of the tasks in this video without issue. What I'm not entirely sure on at this point is whether or not RTX feature sets will vary at all in the future between GeForce and Quadro, but I'm led to believe that won't be the case. To nip a question in the bud, we do not have Quadro RTX cards in the lab at the moment. That could change in the future, but I'm at the mercy of what Nvidia wants to send, and when it wants to send it. On the topic of RTX, none of the tests included here can take advantage of the special features of Turing right now, namely the Tensor and RT cores. Chaos Group reported on its own benchmarking work a couple of weeks ago, and noted that support for RT core will come once Nvidia's Optics engine itself supports it, and since Optics is used for all of these special features, we're going to have to wait a little bit before production renderers deploy their updates. I mentioned before that V-Ray scenes I have don't render fine on Radeon, and before jumping into testing, here's a direct example of what I mean. Compare the T-Set render on both NVIDIA and CUDA, and then AMD OpenCL, and pay particular attention to the color of the tea and Turkish delights. I'm not entirely opposed to drinking tea that looks like it does on the AMD card, but when it's supposed to look like the much lighter tea in the original shot, I think I'd pass. I won't talk too much about our test rig outside of saying that it's using the latest 1809 version of Windows, even though Microsoft pulled it not long after its release. I began this testing as soon as the October update released, and thus had working media before it was pulled. While the build has known issues with file corruption, especially with OneDrive, fresh installs have been fine for me. The most interesting cards of this bunch are GeForce RTXs, and not just because I drew attention to them in the video's title. The GeForce variants of RTX might not be as ideal as Quadro in some situations, since optimizations are going to improve things in some places, but for rendering performance, GeForce will almost always perform just like Quadro. The Titan XP might be last gen at this point, but it's still one hell of a GPU. Despite that, the new top-end GeForce RTX card manages to outperform it by about 22%. That's not bad for a generational leap, but it also seems fair, since the 2080 Ti Founders Edition costs the same as what the Titan XP did. The Titan XT, or whatever the top Turing card will be, is sure to cost more than the XP did. The nice thing about renderers is that the more GPU horsepower you have, the better the performance you're going to get. As this chart proves, the performance can scale just as you would expect. Add multiple GPUs, and your performance will really take off. As the Quadro M6000 result proves, Nvidia's delivered some huge performance leaps from generation to generation, with the Pascal-based P6000 performing far better than that M6000. The RTX 2080 Ti performs far better than the P6000 as well. Since Quadro 6000 has even more cores than the 2080 Ti, it'd pull even further ahead of the P6000. The dual GPU configuration wasn't meant to be a focal point of this video, but Redshift helps prove yet again that the more GPU horsepower there is on hand, the faster the render is going to be. In the Octane render results, last gen's Titan XP outperformed the current gen RTX 2080, but that performance has been reversed in Redshift. It's probably safe to say that the RTX 2080 doesn't match a Titan XP, but in many cases it will come close. The result that stood out to me most here was actually with the Quadro M6000, as it falls behind the less powerful P4000. The result was consistent, so either the Pascal architecture brought a major performance boost to the renderer, or something else is holding back Maxwell's top-end Quadro. But it sure isn't the VRAM. 
The result out of the 2080 Ti and V-Ray is impressive. If we compare the 1080 Ti to the 2080 Ti, the gap is enormous. It's still enormous if we change the 1080 Ti to a Titan XP. Even without the RTX Special Features exercise, Turing exhibits some huge performance gains here. At the moment, the only thing that will displace the top single GPU result is the Quadro RTX 6000 or 8000. And that's ignoring the fact that those have a lot more VRAM to work with than the GeForce equivalents. The RTX 2080 also shows its strength quite well here, as it also beats out last gen's top dog, Titan XP. While RTX doesn't currently accelerate every workload, it sure does make a difference in some of them, such as V-Ray. Remember that this is without the Tensor and RT cores being fully utilized. Again, the Quadro M6000 delivered some interesting performance, because while it fell behind the P4000 in Redshift, it places ahead of the P5000 here. That's despite the fact that the P5000 is rated at over 8 teraflops and the M6000, 6 teraflops. As mentioned before, Nvidia's RTX technologies are not widely supported at the moment, hence the lack of testing on our part up to now. I have a suspicion that V-Ray will be one of the first renderers out the door with official support for Turing RTX, and I can't wait to dive in once it gets here. Redshift and Otoy's Octane likewise have support en route. I admit that it's rather nice that GeForce RTX cards worked in all three renderers here without issue, since we ran into a complete roadblock with Blender and its Cycles renderer. Current versions of Blender Cycles will simply not work with Turing, but support is coming, and once it gets here, I'll be throwing RTX at it. And with that, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed but happen to dig our content, please do us a favor and render us a plus one for the channel. Until next time.